Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I am gonna be sharing with you how to make sourdough pancakes that are not only super tasty, but also very healthy. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Becca, I'm a registered dietitian, and I'm very passionate about making whole, real food recipes at home, but in a way that is approachable and easier, and also I am all for balance and not perfection. I am very much um, a proponent of intuitive eating, and you will see a lot of that here on my channel. But one of the keys to intuitive eating is, you know, focusing on nutrition and fueling your body, you know, as best that you can while also allowing for a lot of balance and maybe not so healthy things. So I am all about cooking for my family as much as I can. Um, I am a busy mom, so I'm certainly not perfect, but breakfast is something that's pretty easy once you get the hang of a few good recipes and one of our favorite go-tos um, is sourdough pancakes. So if you're newer to sourdough, you may not know what all the hype is about or understand like the health benefits, but there definitely are benefits. So when you're making something that is made from sourdough, instead of adding yeast that you would buy like from the store in packets, you're actually using a sourdough starter, which is really cool. It's basically like a symbiotic colony of microbes, meaning like healthy bacteria. It's very much alive and it will really bubble up and that is what you're using in those recipes in place of yeast. So instead of just adding yeast to create a rise, you're adding sourdough starter to create a rise but since it is a fermented food, it actually is adding a whole layer of nutritional benefits as well instead of just creating the rise in your bread products. So there are two main components in a sourdough starter. So you have your wild yeast. So again, instead of buying yeast from the store in packets, the sourdough like naturally has yeast contained in it. it usually comes from the grains. It can also come from the environment and kind of get added to your starter. Um, and then there's also the bacteria um, component. It's lactic acid bacteria, which means they're going to make that starter really acidic. That's what gives it kind of like that sour tang. And also an acidic environment is what yeast really wants to kind of work its magic in. So the yeast is going to make a lot of different enzymes and these enzymes are going to kind of break down the flour in a couple different ways. So they will break down, um, the, or the fermentation will actually break down the gluten doesn't necessarily mean sourdough is gluten free, but it does create a much lower gluten end product, um, which is one way that some people may find it more um, easy to digest. And then also on the other hand, um, the yeast will break down something called phytic acid. Phytic acid is an anti-nutrient, meaning it will bind to nutrients like in your digestive system and actually keep you from being able to absorb them into your body. So by breaking down the phytic acid, you are essentially creating more bioavailability of all the nutrients contained in that grain or in, in, in that flour that you're using. So it makes a more nutritious end product. And also the um, breaking down phytic acid will make it more digestible as well. So we're increasing the nutrition, increasing, you know, how, uh, how easily you can digest the um, sourdough pancake or bread or whatever you're making. So all around, it just makes for a healthier um, food. So for the sourdough pancakes, um, the starter is really the star of the show here. So you actually need a good amount of starter. So you can do this recipe one of two ways. You can feed the starter so it's nice and bubbly and vivacious and alive and light. Um, or if you haven't fed your starter, but you do have a lot on hand, um, you can do this recipe with unfed starter as well. So fed starter basically means you gave it flour and water, you know, anywhere from like four to 12 hours before you're going to use it. You'll see that it rises, it has lots of bubbles, it's very light and fluffy, and that is going to give you a better pancake because they're just gonna be a little bit lighter and fluffier. However, you can use unfed starter, meaning you haven't fed it you know, in that time frame. It's pretty flat, doesn't have very many bubbles. Maybe you literally just pulled it out of the fridge and it's very flat. You can still use this because we are using a leavening agent baking powder in the recipe that's gonna help create that rise. But if you can feed it beforehand, that is always going to be your best bet. So I typically do feed my starter before I make these pancakes. So I usually just feed it 
you know, flour and water before I go to bed, and then the next morning I have this really nice, fluffy, bubbly, large amount of starter to work with. So we're going to take two cups of that starter and add it to a big bowl. So we're using a decent amount. You definitely want to have a good amount of starter on hand for this recipe. Next, we're going to add two eggs. Then we're going to add two tablespoons of melted butter. I just like to get this going in one of my skillets um, as I'm starting this recipe so that it can melt down and then that way I have one skillet that's super hot and buttery and ready to make pancakes. Next, you're going to add two tablespoons of maple syrup to sweeten up the pancakes just a little bit. And then lastly, we're going to add one teaspoon of baking powder. So you'll notice when you add the baking powder that it starts to get even a little bit more bubbly. That's good, that's what we want. And again, this adding the baking powder is you know how we can kind of get away with using unfed starter um, in this recipe although I think it's still always better to feed it beforehand so you are just going to mix together all of those ingredients and then on your skillet or your pan whatever you're using you just want to make sure they're nice and hot and buttery and then you're just gonna go ahead and ladle that ladle the batter onto your skillets wait for the tops of the pancakes to get nice and bubbly and then when you check on the bottom you want to see a nice golden brown color that means you can go ahead and flip them and then you just want to get that golden brown color on the other side as well and then they are all cooked and ready to eat so you can top them with whatever you like you can add chocolate chips you can add blueberries you can add bananas you can have so much fun with this just base sourdough pancake recipe most of the time we just keep it real simple here in my house and we just add maple syrup on top because it's delicious and it's easy um, i do love to also cook up some scrambled eggs on the side and add it with the pancakes because i am really big about creating balanced meals and by balanced I mean macronutrients so always trying to pair either protein and a good amount of fat or at least one of the two with the carbohydrates which are our pancakes um, so that we are a feeling a lot more full and b it's going to help um, keep our blood sugar more steady that way I have an entire video on blood sugar if you want to go in depth on that super helpful and also really key to understand when it comes to nutrition and how you know how to make yourself feel good throughout the day so that is how I make my sour pancakes they're very easy to throw together and I love that they have that just little sour tang to them it's not overbearing in any way but it just really deepens the flavor and it just makes them a lot tastier since you know having made these sourdough pancakes so many times we totally prefer the sourdough version over regular pancakes because regular pancakes while they're still delicious they just I don't know they're just kind of missing that flavor and they're just a lot more tasty and complex when they're the sourdough version. So that is all I have for this video. If you want a printable recipe, um, you can check out my blog post, which I will have linked down below for you guys. And please let me know in the comments below what other recipe videos you would like to see from me um, so that I can do those for you because you guys know that I love to cook and I love just finding kind of easier ways to make healthier options where it's not super finicky and is really approachable. And if you have yet to subscribe to my channel, I'd absolutely love for you to subscribe and join my little community here on YouTube. You can follow me on Instagram as well just to kind of see what we're up to on a daily basis. But that is all I have. Thank you guys again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.